Private Mike Everest, C Company, 10th Battalion, Essex Regiment, 235801. I'm by no means an expert, but I'm going to be chatting to you now just about this, which is our primary battle rifle, the number one Mark III short magazine Lee Enfield rifle. Now we're going to be answering some questions about this piece of equipment, and this is a weapon that has probably arguably started to win us two wars. We used it in the First World War, and we were using it at the start of the Second World War. The action has remained largely unchanged when it was moved onto the Mark I, uh, the number one Mark IV. So this is a big deal. So as a weapon, it's evolved from the Long Lee, which was to be seen in action in the Boer War, evidently named because of the much longer barrel. This one's a shorter one, designed to be a carbine, so much more able to use it on the move, much faster and much shorter. Same as so, it can be used for cavalry as well. Now, the magazine is in reference to this, short magazine Lee Enfield. This is the magazine, and this comes out. Now, unlike in the movies and the video games, this thing does not ever come out when you're on the battlefield. It's a top-loaded magazine there, and what we do is we charge the magazine with charger clips here with five rounds in each one. Each of those gets placed inside of it with a quick action. That opens up, and each of the rounds moves down and plunges the spring there inside the magazine. Once closed up, the rifle is now ready to fire. It fires a 303 cartridge, so it's a third of an inch. It's a pretty hefty caliber um, ball, and it's designed to really put someone down, and it has an effective lethal range of around about 1,000 yards for each one of the uh, soldiers for the British infantry in 1914 to 1918 should be expected to lay down 15 rounds in 60 seconds against a man-sized target and strike him in the chest at 300 yards. The rapid fire technique for this weapon, which is what arguably makes it much more superior to the German rifle, is often referred to as the Mad Minute. This is a quick action with this bolt, okay, designed very cleverly. Unlike the German rifle, it does not obscure your vision, and when it comes down, your fingers are ready to fire. Okay, So with a single action like that, it's quite simple to use. So what we're going to do is what's referred to as a Mad Minute. A Mad Minute would be 15 in 60 seconds. Okay, now. There's actually people who could fire it faster, and the record was set during the war for 37. Now, I'm nowhere near as good as that, but the action, in principle, is this. Now, that's obviously not going to be nearly as accurate as laying down 15 accurately placed shots. Now, bayonets have become an important part of warfare, and they start knocking around around about 1700. They move very quickly through into the Marlborough Revolution, the Marlborough um, Wars, with much longer bayonets, and it, de uh, it, it develops from there. This is no different. Originally, with the long lee, we'd had a small knife bayonet. This, to bring it up to the same length as it, will need a much longer bayonet. In fact, 17 inches. Here we go. Once locked in, the lock is secure. This now means the rifle is much longer, in fact, it clearly 17 inches longer, so we've now got much more room to play with. This thing is an incredibly dangerous piece of equipment, it would have been razor sharp as well. So, the guards are pretty simple, this and the on guard. This to strike down against your opponent. If you're against a new land or a cavalryman, the, bro the breech block comes up against your face like this to stop any sword attacks from striking against your face. We can use longer points, so that means we start to do it like that. We can use shorter points like this, even jabs like that, up into the enemy, or we can take the blade and use it to strike with the butt. Now that's very tricky to do once you're inside the trench, but this piece of equipment really is going to be a fantastically designed killing weapon. Such a simple thing. Mankind has evolved over nearly 10,000 years of warfare, and ultimately being able to strike your opponent at 300 yards with a 303 ball is going to be good, but at the end of the day, Warfare always boils down to hand-to-hand -hand combat. How many rounds would we carry? We're going to be carrying, and each one of these is 15 on the charger clip. So you can see there, that's 10 there. And this, we'd have 15 in each pouch. So we've got 15 there, so around about 150. Then we would also have a bandolier with an extra 50, and another bandolier inside your small pack, so that's another 50. And in the engagement, we'd be spitting out quite a few hundred of them 
okay? We'd be laying it right down on the enemy and they would have boxes of ammunition bought up during the action, during the attack. So service action for this piece of equipment, 1901 is when it really starts to see action. It gets real action during the First World War, so in 1914 to 1918. Start of the Second World War, 1939, the British infantrymen are still using this piece of equipment. And then about 1942, when we're still in Africa, this thing starts to, well, it's still in use, but it starts to kind of, they're, they're bringing in the new rifle, which is the number one Mark IV, which has a different muzzle brake to it and a much smaller bayonet. However, this is still in use by our colonial troops, Gurkhas, Indians, Australians, all these people, still up to the end of the Second World War. It continues in service as it moves into Korea and then into um, uh, India. So India still uses this rifle. Ishapur is the, um, uh, the factory that still makes it out there and their um, police forces still use a number one Mark III or even a number one Mark IV short magazine Lee Enfield rifle. It is still in service today. We would have carried bombs and I've got an example of an early bomb here. At the start of the war, um, bombs were not the traditional hand grenade that you see in the movies, the old pineapple, and it's actually what we would have had in jam tins. They would have had jam tins packed with explosives. This one is a Barrett bomb. Okay, so this is an iron grenade, filled, uh, iron bomb filled with black powder and ball bearings and all kinds of un unsightly stuff, okay? And they move then on to the Mills bomb, which is the much more regular looking bomb, and it's the one that everybody can recognize. The Germans and the French all had stick grenades and things like that, so and they were incredibly effective in, uh, in trench warfare because they could be used to throw over a long distance. And also, this could have been fitted with a very special type of cup holder on the top, which we could have had rifle grenades, which were a grenade that you put in, launch a, uh, use a blank round, and then you could strike at a range of around about 600 yards with a high trajectory. This is a serious piece of equipment, a high explosive round being launched at 600 yards.